This will be the last edition of Countdown. I'll explain that next. I think the same fantasy has popped into the head of everybody in my business who has ever been told what I've been told, that this is going to be the last edition of your show. You go directly to the scene from the movie Network, complete with the pajamas and the raincoat, and you go off on an existential, otherworldly, verbal journey of unutterable profundity and vision. You damn the impediments and you insist upon the insurrections, and then you emit Peter Finch's guttural, resonant, so... And you implore, you will the viewer to go to the window, open it, stick out his head and yell. Well, you know the rest. In the mundane world of television goodbyes, reality is laughably uncooperative. When I resigned from ESPN 13 and a half years ago, I was literally given 30 seconds to say goodbye at the very end of my last edition of SportsCenter. As God is my witness, in the commercial break just before the emotional moment, the producer got into my earpiece and he said, um... Can you cut it down to 15 seconds so we can get in this tennis result from Stuttgart? So I'm grateful that I have a little more time to sign off here. Regardless, this is the last edition of Countdown. It is just under eight years since I returned to MSNBC. I was supposed to fill in for the late Jerry Nackman for exactly three days. 49 days later, there was a four-year contract for me to return to this nightly 8 p.m. time slot, which I had fled four years earlier. The show gradually established its position as anti-establishment from the stagecraft of Mission Accomplished to the exaggerated rescue of Jessica Lynch in Iraq to the death of Pat Tillman to Hurricane Katrina to the nexus of politics and terror to the first special comment. The program grew and grew thanks entirely to your support with great rewards for me and I hope for you too. There were many occasions, particularly in the last two and a half years, where all that surrounded the show, but never the show itself, was just too much for me. But your support and loyalty, and if I may use the word insistence, ultimately required that I keep going. My gratitude to you is boundless, and if you think I've done any good here, imagine how it looked from this end, as you donated $2 million to the National Association of Free Clinics, and my dying father watched from his hospital bed, transcendentally comforted that his struggles were inspiring such overwhelming good for people he and I and you would never meet, but would always know. This may be the only television program wherein the host was much more in awe of the audience than vice versa. You will always be in my heart for that and for the donations to the Cranick family in Tennessee and these victims of governmental heartlessness in Arizona, to say nothing of every letter and email and tweet and wave and handshake and online petition. Time ebbs here and I want to close with one more Thurber story. It is still Friday. So let me thank my gifted staff here and just a few of the many people here who fought with me and for me. Eric Sorensen, Phil Alonji, Neil Shapiro, Michael Weissman, the late David Bloom, John Palmer, Alana Russo, Monica Novotny, my dear friends Rachel Maddow and Bob Costas, and my greatest protector and most indefatigable cheerleader, the late Tim Russert. Moral, it is better to ask some of the questions than to know all the answers. Scotty Who Knew Too Much by James Thurber. Chris Hayes filling in for Rachel Maddow on The Rachel Maddow Show is next. Again, all of my greatest thanks. Widen the shot out just a little bit so we can do one of these last time. Thank you, Brian. Good night and good luck. <laughs>